Tony D and Little Jones somewhere in the background, and this is a screenwriter's rant on linoleum, starring Jim Gaffigan as a, I don't know what he is, I think he's like a Bill Nye host, and a bunch of weird things happen to him, and he wants to go to space. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Check out my books. Links in the description. Comedy Horror in South Jersey. It's the Pineys. Books 1 through 10. Available at Amazon.com. Don't forget, Kindle Unlimited is free. So here's a weird thing. There's lots of weird things in this trailer. It starts with this guy being kind of depressed and sending a letter to NASA. And then, out of nowhere, this car drops out of the sky. And the guy in it is also played by Jim Gaffigan, but he's younger. It's kind of like a different version of him. And then he tells his family and then goes into work. And he's been replaced by that guy who doesn't remember the crash. And I guess nobody saw it. And then, I don't know. He, he then a, uh, an actual rocket crashes into his backyard. And, uh, I guess he was a scientist. So he, decides to take the pieces and build his own rocket. And his wife is also uh, played by the woman from Better Call Saul. I forget her name. Rhea Seahorn, I think that's her name. Uh, she's the wife, and at first she thinks he's crazy, but then later she joins in on building a rocket. And then later he's testing the rocket, and it doesn't work. And his kid is like, I don't know, he's coming into his own. There's a sub-story with him. There's like a lot of stuff going on in this movie. It feels like, uh, what is that, for director, who was it, Cornell West, did it say? Colin West. <laughs> I don't know why I say Cornell. I don't know what time period t this takes place in, but uh, Michael Ian Black is in it as his boss, which is kind of funny. I don't know, is this supposed to be a serious rocket, or is this just a pretend rocket? And then they, I don't know, it might be a dream sequence? He goes up in a dream? I, I don't know. I don't know what this is it, it seems to be a lot of symbolism and it's coming out in february written and directed by colin west i don't know man it feels very symbolic and metaphoric uh it reminds me a little bit of donnie darko not the dark part but the weird time jump or time travel and it it, it might have wormholes in it and whatnot it's got this broken space space uh, uh astronaut outfit here he is i don't know getting parts out of a junkyard to build this rocket ship uh, is this based on anything what the hell is this i don't know it doesn't uh, let me read the synopsis because it's not very clear i mean it's got a great cast tony shalhoub he's good cameron edwin jim gaffigan is the host of a failing children's science tv show called above and beyond so first up can we just all agree that these really don't exist anymore? How many children's television shows locally do you see anymore? That was a thing in the 50s. When I was growing up in the 80s, they didn't really even have these shows. They had like, Sid and Marty Croft had a show with, you know, people, puppets and people in puppet suits, but it wasn't like a a guy talking to the camera. We had one show like that, it was called Captain Noah, and really, he was just a bookend to show you other things. So, I don't get where they constantly go back to this well. They constantly go back to this well of like, oh, you know, he's a he's a kid talk show host. There's like nine million movies about kid talk show hosts. They're having an existential crisis and we have to like relate to that. When the shows don't really exist anymore. Yeah, every once in a while one of them pops up and... But there's not... It's not like it was... In like the 50s, in the 50s, those shows were everywhere. Howdy Doody was like the most popular one, right? There was a bunch of crazy hosts. I mean, I guess you could say Sesame Street was like that. But when I was growing up as a, as a kid, Sesame Street and Captain Noah, that was it. And those shows weren't even like the one they're portraying. But they've done this shtick in movies a bunch of times. Even in Scrooge, when I saw it in Scrooge. But at least that scene takes place far in the past, in New York City, so you could say, well, maybe. I, I, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Anyhow, so he's in a failing children's science TV show called Above and Beyond, and has always asked, has aspires 
aspires to be an astronaut. After a mysterious space race, Eris satellite, coincidentally, falls from space and lands in his backyard, his midlife crisis manifests a plan to rebuild the machine into his dream rocket. As his relationship with his wife, Rhea Seahorn, and daughter, Caitlin Nacon, start to strain, surreal events begin unfolding around him. A doppelganger moving into the house next door, a car falling from the sky, an unusual teenage boy forging a, fr forging a friendship with him. Well, that's weird. Uh, he slowly starts to piece these events together to ultimately reveal that there's more to his life story than he once thought? I guess. And it's called linoleum. It's like you're going out of your way to be obtuse, right? And that's why it kind of reminds me of Donnie Darko, which is like that, I think. It's like, and, I, and it's probably a poor comparison because Donnie Darko is a bit dark and dreary, but, you know, there are other movies like this and they're supposed to be cute and quirky and weird, but they just come off to me as pretentious because they don't really hold together when you start actually thinking about them. They're just metaphors, right? They're just metaphors. Maybe in a book, this kind of works, but not in a movie, I think. And visually, fun, interesting, I guess you could say, even funny in moments. But I like explanations of things. I like to know why. I, I wish they could have a clever explanation of why all this happened. Like, I don't know, maybe he builds a rocket, but it turns out it's a gateway to alternate dimensions, and that's why all these people start appearing. Maybe that's a teenage version of himself. The other guy's is another version of himself. And uh, his machine brought them into being, and, like, he just has to live with the consequences. I don't know, but I don't think there's going to be any explanation in this. It's going to be all this wacky concepts that draws you in, and then they're going to give you a completely different ending about his relationship. And then they're going to be like, well, it doesn't, the other stuff doesn't matter because see, his relationship works now. See, him and Rhea Seahorn, they're now on the same page and they're in love again. So who cares about all that stuff we lured, used to lure you in to watch the damn movie? Man, I am really getting angry at this movie. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm not really a fan of Gaffigan anymore because he said too many political things and now he annoys me. Um, he's also making this transition from comedian, and he's a pretty good comic, to serious actor. Um, he's been in a bunch of stuff. Some of it's okay. I don't know. This movie, I think too much of it rests on him. And, uh, you know, so I, see, surprising, beautiful, and strange. Is it... I, it feels pretentious. Pretentious, quirky for no reason, and weird to be on IFC very soon. Michael Ian Black, I still do enjoy. <laughs> I wish he'd just get, they just give him a comedy movie. Why not give, give Jim Gaffigan a comedy movie? Remember comedy, Jim? How about comedy movies? You got a stand up comic, you got a talent like Michael Ian Black. Why not? If this was a comedy, it would probably be great. Then who cares? It doesn't come together at the end. Right? You can make all these fantastical things. Because in comedy, the sky's the limit. As long as it's funny. Because the purpose is the laughs. It's not this pretentious thing that you got to come together. Oh, don't worry. His relationship's better. He, he's, he's, his relationship with his daughter is better and his wife and everything's going to be fine. Yeah, but what about all that crazy crap that happened to him? Oh, none of that matters. Wasn't it a beautiful ride? No, that stuff does matter because that's why I would, in the past, watch these movies. That's why I would tune in. I would tune in to see, oh, there's all this crazy stuff happening. Well, let's see the explanation. And I'm watching it for the explanation and you're giving me all this relationship stuff. And then you end the movie, and it's like, well, none of that was explained. <laughs> so, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of a, in my view, a more sophisticated bait and switch. It's like they lure you in with all this quirky stuff, but really, it's just a drama about a guy who's having a midlife crisis and eventually resolves stuff with his wife and kid. Whereas, I mean, if you're going to tease me with Rick and Morty elements, I want to see the Rick and Morty. 
I want to see the Rick and Morty part. Yeah, I do want to see him resolve his issues, I guess. I do want to see the relationship stuff, but I don't want it all to focus on the relation. I want to pay off on all the other stuff too. Can't you give me both? Can't you come up with an explanation why all this crazy crap happened to him? No, no, it's the journey. It's not the, the ride. No, it's both. I want to see both. I want to see both pay off. If you don't have both pay off, I feel like I got robbed. I would come out of the theater going, well, yeah, he did resolve his issues with his wife, but why did a car drop out of the sky and nobody remembered it? I am I feel like they're not going to explain that. They're just going to gloss over it and keep moving forward and give you more crazy things to go, well, that's an even crazier thing. Am I wrong? I don't know. Has anyone seen this movie yet? It comes out in February, so... Yeah, they're kind of... Again, February tends to be the dumping ground for movies they don't think will do well, but maybe they can pick up an audience in the dead time of February because who goes to see movies in February? Well, a lot of movie buffs like myself will go because they're always seeing movies. And then, you know, maybe you get some good buzz and, oh, it's very quirky, and then March hits and then people are going to see the damn thing and the limit the limited release gets extended or expanded maybe. If you're super lucky, do I think that's going to happen? Probably not in this day and age. This is looking like, I don't know, a very forgettable, pretentious movie to me. That'll end up on IFC or one of the streaming services, and it'll just be kind of a curious oddity for a while, and then it'll kind of disappear. That's what it feels like to me. And I'm not even knocking the cast, because you got such a great cast here. I do like Rhea Seahorn. She's a really good actress. Tony Shalhoub is fantastic i why isn't he the star of the movie no offense to jim gaffigan who i think is very funny if this was a comedy i'd be like yes jim gaffigan the star but if you're doing a, a complex allegedly complex drama like this and essentially that i think that's what they're trying to put in or a satire maybe then i'd want tony shalhoub tony shalhoub should be the main guy the put upon scientist who can't pull it all together. He's got the range. I don't think Jim Gaffigan has the range to pull this off. Again, no offense to him. I think in a comedy, he would be gangbusters. He, he's done some comedic turns that I really like. Michael Ian Black? I mean, those two together? Oh, my God. It would be fantastic. But that's not what this is, apparently. It's a vision of something. And it's called linoleum? For what? Linoleum. Well, we'll just call it linoleum and people will wonder. K k give me a title to tell me what the F this is. Wh why does it have to be, again, so obtuse? Why do you have to hide it? Why don't you just tell me what your movie is, and what you're doing? Give me an idea. I, I had to read the synopsis to really understand what this movie is. I shouldn't have to look at the trailer and then wonder, what the F, what did I, what did I watch? That's not, that's not drawing me in. I go, ah, this isn't... I, it looks like a bunch of nonsense. And then I read the the, the synopsis. Well, <laughs> some of it, I get. I guess I get it. It kind of looks like that. But you started with this car dropping out of the sky, and you're really not giving me an explanation. And it looks like in the movie you don't give an explanation. That would drive me insane watching this movie. I'd be watching it going, when are you going to explain why this car fell out of the sky? Was it a dream? Was it not real? I, I'm supposed to, like... Go out of the theater like, oh, they never explain that. Oh, I guess it was a metaphor for something. Maybe he's really dead. I, I guess, I guess we can make if you can pull that off. I, do I think this movie pulls that off? Doubtful, really doubtful. Despite this fairly stellar cast, I guess. And then on top of the fact, there's some strange teenage kid who comes out of nowhere. Are they going to explain that? Are they going to explain any of this movie? I don't know. I don't see the payoffs coming. You know? Now, maybe that's the trailer. Maybe it's a terrible trailer. Maybe it's an amazing movie. I don't know. But it seems wildly off the mark. With your cast, you got a funny cast here. This could be a hilarious movie. You could do a total send-up of movies like Donnie, Donnie Darko. You do a total send-up of movies like this. Pretentious, wacky movies that are quirky for no GD reason. And do an amazing send up of it and tie it into, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, I'm 
trying to think of the name of the movie. I, I want to say What's Eating Gilbert Grape, but that's not the movie I'm thinking of. Uh, it was a movie like that. But like these satirized movies, these pretentious, they're supposed to be funny, but they're kind of not. They're sort of more amusing and weird. Like those kinds of movies. You could do a send-up of that. You have the cast. Instead, you're just making another one, which I don't know. I don't think this is going anywhere. Linoleum, I guess. February 24th. Ugh, I've had too much caffeine. And that's it for me, Tony D and Little Joan. Check us out on Odyssey, BitChute, and Rumble for our more base takes. Maybe not so ranty. I'll be at the uh, White Horse Winery on Friday at 6 p.m. And I will be at WildCon on Saturday. Hope to see you then, and we'll see you.